Hi, Anthony again from Contractors Debt Recovery and welcome to this second video series. We've had amazing feedback uh, from the first series, uh, a lot of people forwarding them on and most importantly, uh, a lot of people saying this is really useful information that they could put to use very, very quickly and only took a few minutes out of their day to have a look at. So we're kicking off with a new series and we've got the whiteboard up, you see a little bit more of me, lucky you. Uh, in uh, going through this whole new series of information for construction contractors. So what we're going to talk about today is very simply counting days. Now, um, what we're going to um, address here is the issue of how to count days. Now that sounds extremely simple and uh, probably even insulting, but how often uh, contractors using the Security of Payment Act do not count their days effectively. They do not count business days properly and get the whole thing mixed up and ultimately invalidated. The other type of day counting is simply calendar, day, calendar days, normal days. Uh, contracts require payment to happen in X number of days or notices to be given within a certain number of days. So how do you count those? Uh, so commonly that's mixed up. So we're very simply going to address that here. Let's talk about business days first. So Business days, okay. A business day is any other day other than a weekend or a public holiday, okay, generally speaking, okay? And a public holiday as applies in your jurisdiction or in your state. Now, the big trick when you count business days is to remember that day one is not the day you get a notice. It's the day after, so for example, if you need to submit, um, let's say you want to serve a payment claim under the Act and uh, your party has to, uh, the respondent has to serve a payment schedule within 10 business days. If you serve the claim here, day one is not that day. Day one is the next business day. So that's a Monday, let's say. Next business day is Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, then Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. The following Friday, a week, Friday, a week. Leaving out the weekends and making sure day one is the day after you've served the claim. Now, the respondent has 10 business days to send you a payment schedule. Now, likewise, day one starts the day after they get it. So. If uh, they've um, received a claim on this day from you, uh, they've got until this day to send you a payment schedule. Uh, same with five business days with a follow-up notice, 17 two notice or 18 two notice or 21 two notice, depending which state you're in. The same thing applies, five business days starting the day after. So if the due date for payment fell here, you can only serve those notices after the due date for payment. If it fell here, then from day one, the next day, you can serve that notice. A very common mistake uh, made is where a due date for payment is 10 business days after receiving the claim, and a contractor will serve a claim, wait out the 10 days, and then move on to the next notice on the same day, because they've forgotten that day one is the day after the claim is received by the respondent, not the same day. They make a mistake of a day. All right, I hope that's clear to you. So please start on the next day. Now, if we talk about calendar days, <coughs> same thing except weekends, public holidays, everything's included. So if under many contracts payment is due within 28 days, we assume just 28 days, again, day one is the day after. So if payment is due within 28 days, it'll normally say of receiving the claim. If your client receives the claim on this day, day one's the next day and you count forward 28 days and on day 28, payment is due on that day. Okay, again, a very common mistake starting day one as the same day. So the, the one thing that falls out of this is you need to be able to absolutely prove that a claim was sent on that day or that the due date payment is that day. So with a claim, why I insist that claims should be served by courier or fax is that you've got proof that that is the day 
And if you can prove that that is the day the claim was received, then you're very confident in saying, well, then that's day one, and that's day two, etc., etc. If you post a claim, you may have posted it that day, but did they get the post that day? Did they get it then? Did they get it then? You might have emailed it on that day, but maybe they only opened the email that day. Very hard to know where the days start to count from. Okay, so that's why I insist documents should be served by fax with a transmission report or by courier. You can prove the day it was received and then you can count days effectively. Okay, I won't go on too much more about that. It's uh, fairly straightforward. Remember your public holidays in whichever state you're in, uh, Commonwealth holidays and state-based holidays. Remember your weekends and your long weekends. Account for those and uh, start with day one the day after. All right? So uh, if you've got any other queries or questions or just want to talk to us, uh, just contact us, contact us at the number on your screen and we'll be happy to help out. I'll see you next time.